And here we go. We're recording. I see the, the message. Welcome, everybody. I call this meeting together and I wanted something to be fun and very childlike, which I know that was. <laughs> and I welcome everybody to the resources from a holistic perspective to grow your love, your connection, and the light. And we have a wonderful group of light healers from different disciplines on the West Coast, including Arizona and everybody will introduce themselves to you as it's their turn. And to this morning, I listened to the news and found that for California, we are being sheltered in place for the entire month of April and what that means and how that feels. So for a lot of individuals, it's a step into reality. Those of us who were denying it before, it may be more difficult to deny it now. So we're really here. And what can we do to go inside ourselves to find our inner truth and to also be available with light and hope for us and for our animal friends? So I'm going to start with me. And I'm Cheryl Schwartz. And I've been an explorer, spiritual, integral, holistic, blah, 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 veterinarian and educator for a long time. And what I'd like to do first is show you an exercise to help your immunity. Your immunity in Chinese medicine is in part regulated by a triple heater meridian, which you don't have to know except it runs on the outside, the front of your arm and your elbow going up through your shoulder, below your ear and around to your eyebrow. And what that does is it helps to strengthen your immunity as you engage it. So the exercise from the eight silk and brocade qigong is to hold your hands together. And please, anybody who would like to do it with me, hold your hands together. And as you separate your hands, you're going to move your upper hand out like this and your lower hand down. So, and I can't figure out how to do this so that you can see it, but it's basically as you stretch, you can feel the outsides of your arms and the back of your arms stretching. Come back to your chest, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Hold that for a moment, love yourself and bring it to your center. And from our last, so this will help to strengthen you and center you. Whenever you stay centered, you're centering your animal friends. The next little thing that I'd like to remind people of is what I reminded you of the last time, and I wrote this, but I don't know how many people have done it, and that is to help your animal feel calm from anxiety, to engage underneath the collarbone area, this whole area here that covers your lungs and your pericardium and your heart and your stomach, just in this area here, and in your upper lumbar area along your spine. And you're going to breathe. And it gives a wonderful boundary to the heart and lungs in the top and a stability and a strengthening to the kidneys and lower part of the body with your other hand. Ah, Linda is here. I'm going to admit Linda. Thank you. Wonderful. So 
And when Linda comes on, I'm going to tell her to mute herself. The third thing I would like to show you is that my clients have been calling me and there are three aspects that I've been questions about. One is the anxiety. Another is an appetite or some kind of digestive issue from the worry that's occurring. And the third of all things is kidney failure. So I'd like to address the appetite and the digestive issues and just let you know that the stomach digestion moves everything down. So when you eat something, the energy goes down. I'd like you to take your hand and go beneath your chin and just right down your belly. And if you had a stomach ache, how would you respond? You'd rub your tummy in one way or the other. You'd hold something there. And this is what I've been doing with the animals, with me and asking you to do it with them. If you cannot get an area on the abdominal midline from your animal because they're sore, do it on yourself and stand close to the animal because that animal will be connected. So whatever works for you to help relieve your tummy ache and to get things moving in a downward direction, that's what you're gonna do for your animal. As far as herbal recommendations, I was thinking about things since I spoke with you, Gretchen, about things that might be on hand in someone's kitchen. Chamomile with its bitters, catnip, especially in glycerate for the cats, and it has a, a calming anxiety, but an increase in appetite. And the last thing is fennel, fennel that warms the stomach and moves things down and decreases gas and bloating. Okay, those are my tips. I'm going to mute myself and next up is Snow. Snow Nemeth. Snow, please introduce yourself. Hello, and can you hear me first of all? Are you able to hear me? I just unmuted. Excellent, and we're recording, perfect. Um, thank you for the invite. I'm Snow and uh, although it's many, many, nearly three decades ago, there is some background in veterinary medicine as a technician and uh, idolizing my neighbor, who was a wonderful woman veterinarian, um, going on to work with people. My forte is energy medicine, um, and I practice distance healing for animals and people in a variety of more osteopathic as well as shamanic modalities. So not to replicate what we're all sharing here and in the theme of connection love and light first and foremost our intention is so so important our vibration our frequency so anything that can bring us to center thinking so it takes us to a place of feeling peace calm love any iconic or archetypal energies that reinforce our connection to spirit and nature. Breathing this in, taking it deeply into the lower aspect of our lungs and towards our back will stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which will help us calm. And our animals, our beloved furry companions, or perhaps not furry, are on this journey with us and they feel us. And this is a, an incredible opportunity for humanity to transcend their fear and their uncertainty and honor those who are journeying with us on this planet. So focusing on love, emitting that vibration, intentionally bringing in light, literally imagining that we are feeding off of photons of light like the trees do for sunlight and taking that and circulating it through, adding that to the movement of the meridians and the exercises that Dr. Schwartz is giving us, gifting us, will make a profound difference. And if our animals won't allow us to 
perhaps we're not centered enough to run our hands down those areas, then um, oftentimes ourself as a surrogate or even a stuffed animal, be playful, sing, be childlike, bring us into a space that fosters more assurance for them. And also as our routines have changed with the um, staying in place, or shelter in place, their routines have changed too. So be mindful and respectful that while for some people, things like computers and televisions and music in the background is something that people have as a go-to to calm their busy mind, this increases the noise and atmosphere and electromagnetic frequencies that our animal companions are dealing with. So please be present with them when you choose to focus on them and perhaps be mindful that they are receiving more stimulus right now. So anything that can mitigate that for them is very kind. And whatever capacity you have to engage with nature, um, sunshine, fresh air, movement, and whether that's outside walking your dog or playing with your cat in the yard or practicing yoga with your kitty, um, all of those will bring both into a calmer place and also be able to cathart out stress hormones and increase the kind of chemicals in our chemistry that will foster health and immunity versus um, static in a stress state. And um, yeah, focusing on those healthy exercises. And right now there are a plentitude of resources online, just as these are being offered. So if you're uncertain, um, go to YouTube, look up how to do pranayama breathing exercises, um, consult your practitioners, anything in energy medicine that you are comfortable with and aligns with your belief system, whether it's shamanic, it's Reiki, it's therapeutic touch, all of these modalities are very, very helpful in this time in particular where frequency and emission of what we're feeling is um, having a powerful and profound impact on all of us. So um, please join us in elevating the vibration for the entire collective and returning to a space of love. Um, so pet, cuddle, brush, whatever you do with your beloved animal companion and um as mine is such a great teacher for me straighten out your energy first <laughs> thank you thank you snow that was wonderful yay next up is dr marlene smith marlene are you there yes i am I don't know if I will appear on the screen because I have a very slow dial-up connection. Um, <clears throat> I'm Marlene Smith and I'm a retired integrative veterinarian with uh, the background of having taught Chinese medicine with Dr. Cheryl Schwartz. We were a tag team in the teaching of the basic understanding of veterinary traditional Chinese medicine. Um, I live on Vancouver Island where it is nice and sunny. I have the incredible gift of living on an acreage away from most people. So isolation is not really affecting us as serious as when we would live in the city. And also it has given me the opportunity to, because we have also social distancing or better said physical distancing, which most people interpret, interpret as social distancing. It has given me the opportunity to focus on my animals. I have two cats and three dogs, and they are both teaching me things, which is very stunning. I agree what Snow was talking about, the change in frequencies. We are limited mostly to see the frequencies in a very limited range, and the animals have the ability to 
transcend and access in higher frequency as they need it in the hunting and in the warning. I have been puzzled why my cats, who normally go out a lot and hunting, are now staying close to home and checking in with me frequently, trying to calm me down, trying to tell me, we take care of your spirit. Trust us, we are your spiritual guide, and we will help you to access some of your ancient memories of connection with nature, connection with the, the self, and connection of ancient memories of how we came through times like this before and how we survived. They have, of course, an easier access than we have. So I find it quite remarkable how they come and, and have changed their behavior in being aloof and expecting me to be their servant. We now, now they have changed and are my soothing, helping spiritual guides. The dogs, they have also changed which is quite remarkable. And we're talking a lot about that we have to take care of ourselves and our animals. And in the last few days, I have noticed that the animals are stepping up to start taking care of me and of us. One of my dogs has taught me yesterday when we were on a walk and she lost her ball, she thought would float and it sank to the bottom. And she showed me a series of things that she knows, but never has put together in that situation. And while I was watching her, what she did eventually to find her ball, she found it with her feet, jumped it between her front feet, lifted it to the surface, and then picked it up because she couldn't see it. The waters were muddy, which was quite stunning. And while I was watching her, I got a strong message. She showed me this to remind me that we have in our memory numerous experiences and memories and we may have to dig them up and put them in place now to be able one to survive two to connect three to trust and have love and unconditional love and finally to enter this new frequency with a change because unless we humans make a change this will happen over and over and over over again to us. And I'm grateful that, yes, continue doing all the things that Dr. Cheryl Schwartz said and Snow said about relating to your animals, extra cuddle, extra love, learn from this, them, the unconditional love, treat them on the meridians as Dr. Cheryl Schwartz showed you, and also start opening up to the guidance that the animals will give to us. The cats will help us to find our spiritual connection. The dogs will help us to remind us of ancient memories, how to connect with love. And the horses will take us there. They carry us there. So you're very, very fortunate if you have animals. Love them, take care of them. And we always say, never waste a bad word or a bad thought on them because their life is too short. Well, this is now in our reality too. So not only with the animals should we never waste an impatient, angry, short reaction, but also to ourselves and to our fellow human beings around us to truly step in the light and truly start practicing this unconditional love. Um, I feel incredibly blessed that I'm here with all of you who understand this incredible opportunity and this incredible door that has opened up to us. That's it. Yay, Marlene. If I believed in TED Talks, I'd sign you on. But I think that what I'll do is call you a TEDette. Next up is, Ms. is Dr. Rob Erdeman. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, sort of continue in the same vein that um, Cheryl and Snow and Marlene, everything that has been said um, have been in my experiences as well. Um, just as far as my background, I'm a veterinarian or I used to practice as a veterinarian and for the past 30 years, 
have been working with uh, a man in the Netherlands who has developed uh, a way of looking at uh, connecting our consciousness to our physical structure and using our bodies as our instrument. And what I have uh, found in these times is, also, as with everything that has been said so far, is a kind of um, amplification or an intensification of the issues that exist in the animals that I encounter, as well as myself and the animal owners. So if we have difficulties to be in the here and now, for example, well, it's hugely amplified right now because it's something to be in the here and now is something that we can really rely on when we have a healthy foundation for it in ourselves. And maybe another way of saying it is, as individuals, we are okay until we're not. And it doesn't mean that there will be an until we're not. We, we, I feel in our society and the collective consciousness, we have a mistrust for the here and now and an anxiety about the future. And this, what we're going through, I find is an incredible opportunity to surrender, to be where we are and find our deeper love, our deeper happiness, a kind of peace in ourselves and make bridges uh, to those around us and to uh, our animals. And um, Marlene and Snow did a really good job of talking about what we can do for our animals. I wanna talk about what we can do for ourselves so we can be more supportive of them. And when we met before uh, I did a demonstration of sitting on our hands to support ourselves to access our consciousness to be in the here and now. And I have found that to be a really useful exercise to find some freedom from all of the pollution around us so that we can just really be there for ourselves. Another way to do that is to walk on our butts. And I thought about uh, doing a demo of that. And if you're patient, I can try it to set up the computer. It's an exercise that I hate to do because it's difficult for me. Um, can you see me? Yes? Okay, so basically putting yourself on the floor and walking across, back and forth, and side to side. And as I do this, I can feel that it's been too long since I've done it. But that can bring, uh, yeah, I feel more relaxed, can bring you into the here and now. And if you do it for three minutes, pretty much I can promise you, you'll be really tired. When you do those exercises to come into the here and now, it will change your radiation, which in itself is supportive for the animals and can really be a foundation for togetherness and love. For, I've had uh, a couple of patients in crisis and um, I was able to work with them um, virtually like we are now. Doing the here and now exercises for the self first, you can then make contact with your animals. And I use this vase as a prop so I bring my hands 
to the base to meet the base. And that's it. And you can do that with your animals, hips and shoulders. And that will give them support and stability to be in the here and now. And it really, I have found it to be very anchoring in relationship to the pervasive anxiety and mistrust in the future. And we all do have a future. It will come uh, with less stress if we can stay in the here and now. So anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. Yay, Rob. I'm just so blown away by the wonderful things that people are doing, feeling, and being right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And next up is Mary Argo. Ta-da, there we go. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm off mute, mute now. Uh, I am Mary Argo. I've been an animal communicator for 20 plus years, and I've studied flower essences, some homeopathy, and a variety of healing modalities, but my specialty is mainly animal communication. And um, I've, like Cheryl said, there have been a lot of animals with anxiety and stomach issues and kidney issues, and I've had a number of clients in this last um, new moon who passed away, and I actually was just talking to one before this event, and, and she was so funny. She said, why are you guys so worried? Why are you worrying about all of this? You know you'll survive. And so just kind of remembering that in her person went, took a deep breath, and you could feel that energy just go out and go, oh, we're okay. And one of the really important messages she even had, timely, timely call, was working together and looking to each other for support. And even though, yes, we're, supposed, we're distant, we are actually leaning on each other more and more right now. And our animals are there to support that too. And in the last get together, I was talking about chakras in our hands and feet. Well, the animals also have it in their paws and to help them ground is just picturing the their energy, all their nervous energy in their stomach and their kidneys going through their paws into the ground where mother nature can take care of it. And it's amazing how many animals will calm down if you show them or give them the guidance to do that. Yes, they, they are aware, but they pick up our energy and our fretfulness and everything. And uh, into clients through this big change and because people are home more and there is, there's a lot of change, is even using not only rescue remedy, but the Bach flower remedy, walnut, is all about change. And I also like willow for going with the flow. And I jokingly call it wallow, because I always blend the two together for change and going with the flow. And it'll just help ground not only you, but your animal. And so once they see you grounded, they can also remember to ground themselves so they don't feel that they have to take care of your nervousness and your energy. So as long as we always know to work together, even from apart, we can still work together. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. I know Nick is resting here on the chair. Yay. <laughs> to everything, the wizard, Mr. Nick, my cat. Yeah, Merlin's right behind me, kind of hiding, holding the energy here, too. <laughs> Next up is Gretchen Lauler. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm delighted to be here again. I had said to Cheryl, well, no, da, da. and then I thought about it, and I thought, no, this is an extraordinary manifestation of the astrology of the times. And I, I mentioned last time, I've been in astrology since I was 18. That's now... Uh, 52 years. Um, and I also trained as a naturopathic doctor in the 70s in New Zealand and ended up with a passion for homeopathy and flower essences and studied in, studied around the world with extraordinary people and did fabulous things. I'm very lucky. So I just love these things like Mary, your reminder of willow and walnut. How how wonderful. Just everything each one of you were saying. Marlene's, 
you know, like the ancient teachers and teachings coming forward at this time. The North Node is in Cancer. And this idea that we talked about last time, I, I hear it from each one of you, this co more collaborative energy, Saturn into Aquarius last weekend and there until uh, the beginning of July. And then it's going to go back into Capricorn for a while and then out the end of the year and we can talk about that later. But this idea of more collaboration, less authoritarian. So the authoritarian is the, you know, the vertical and the horizontal is so much sturdier because it's all of us. And then all of the ones that we know, because I shared with other people things that you shared. So I was going and sending energy out. I got hold of Cheryl, who is awesome because my dog my puppy was doing things that you're all talking about and needing my me to do a better job and Cheryl was brilliant oh my god and it was just like bam so I was delighted and it's what you're all talking about like uh so so just a couple of astrological tidbits because that would be my tools um this coming week um, there will be, Mercury will be combined right with Neptune. And it's a brilliant time to seek visions. And we're in it already, but it's fabulous for meditation. It's fabulous for prayer. It's fabulous for contacts with the ancestors, um, with our spirit guides and sources, uh, through dreams, through art, through prayer, a great time to seek visions. And then... Uh, and, and for us, you know, also to remember that we're in Aries time and time in Aries time is for the time for the pioneers to step forward. And each one of you, each one of us, we're pioneers because we're, we're, we're responding earlier. We're first responders. And it's really important. And I, I've, I've really felt this a lot recently is I need occasional time alone because I need for, to wait for others to, to catch up because people keep thinking I'm, I'm nuts. And, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm my, one of my big things is this mask making that we're having to do here on Whidbey Island. We have hundreds of people sewing, making masks for every hospital, re, you know, retirement home, for the, for the police, for the grocers, for you know, and it and it's just the most fabulous thing. And now I've been talking about we're all going to need to do this. You know, I just got this for today for right now because I just gave away my last ones that I made. But I'm trying to get teenagers going on this because I thought, wow, they need to feel like they can do something. And so I'm starting little pods of teenagers. But this mask making thing is awesome. I, I went back to Facebook, which I don't tend to use, and I mentioned it. And by today, today I had people asking me from all over the world about the patterns for the masks, all over the world. And last week, people were saying, <sighs> and the week before that, even the doctors in the hospitals were saying, no, 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 that's not going to work. And now they're saying, thank you for every single one we get. So it is that time and it's really important for all of us to take that time alone for others to catch up because it's really tiring waking people up, doesn't it? And yeah, and I've, I've I kind of had, I'm having a, you know, a kind of a day off of people. That was what I was thinking of, but then I decided that I'd like to be with you guys. <laughs> Because I, I know that it's it's helpful stuff. And the last bit, because I don't want to keep you, that, let's see, what was the last thing? Um, oh, that, that, you, that, that Mars is also joining Saturn now. And so this, this urge to, to, towards this more collaborative, less authoritarian, just in the last couple of days has activated. People are going to feel more willing and ready. And it's really important that as we're, ex that we need to experiment, not to be too attached to what we believe in, you know, because we say, as everybody says, everything's 
different. <laughs> Anything, you know, it's all different. And, and it's scary at times. And so it's like keeping our views alive or our, you know, what we believe in, what we think is on the horizon. And experiment. Be willing to experiment and always team efforts. When you get, when you get stuck, somebody else will know. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Thank you. And again, I love your outfit. It makes me think next time I'm going to wear one of my crazy hats, too. <laughs> and also it reminded me that as and a mask, yes, a scarf and a mask. So we'll be like the Lone Ranger, except in collaboration. And it reminded me that those of us who are empaths are taking in so much all of the time that we're not aware of even, that it's making our chest and our back so tight. And to remember to take time out and to breathe it out or to do whatever it is in nature that helps you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Next up is Sally Savitz. All right, here I am. Can you see me? Can... All right, I want to say namaste to everyone. And I hope the last nine days since we last met has been filled with love, light, unconditional love and connection. I'm really happy to be doing this again. It's a light for me in my life to be here and to hear all the amazing words of wisdom from people who participate in this. So I'm gonna uh, really do this to give you a specific homeopathic remedies that I think will be helpful for you and your animal and your other friends, human friends and other human animals. So I'll try and do it uh, succinctly, but I want you to be able to understand uh, how to spell each remedy if you have problems, I'll spell some Sally, out. I'm just going to interrupt you and please introduce yourself. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Cheryl. My name is Sally Savitz. I've been practicing classical homeopathy for the last 35 or more years. And I also have been practicing uh, traditional Chinese medicine. And I have the, the gift and the wonderful blessing of working with Cheryl. Uh, with doing homeopathy and she's doing the acupuncture and I'm doing the homeopathy with the animals. So uh, anyway, what I was starting to say is I'm mainly going to give you some remedies and I'll try and spell them out. Before I do that, there are two things I'd like to do and say in homeopathic terms, this time we're going through would be considered a sepia time. And sepia, if you know the color of sepia, it's monochromatic. And uh, that's, I, I know I experience that. When I first wake up in the morning, I have that feeling of no color. And I think besides bringing light and being a light bearer, we also have to bring color into our world right now. I think that's a very important thing not to forget. And as I said last time, the rem a remedy that you should have on hand, if you, if you need it, is gelsemium. Gelsemium is a remedy that really covers the beginning stages of this virus with fatigue and fevers. So I would like to help you out by giving you the um, toll-free number for the Hahnemann Clinic, because you can call there, get the remedy. They use a priority mail. You can get the remedy within two days. So the Hahnemann Cl Clinic number is 888-427-6422. I'm going to talk about restlessness and give you remedy and then try and give you what we call in homeopathic terms a keynote, which is an indication that this remedy is needed. It guides you right into the remedy. So in terms of restlessness with humans, it has a tremendous anxiety and a fear of death. Um, almost to the time that they predict I'm going to die in three days. I know you can't tell that with your animal, but you'll be able to see that they're absolutely agitated and uh, have, you ha are gonna ha have a lot of problem calming them down. This remedy is very soothing, very helpful. I've seen it used hundreds of times. 
The next remedy I'm going to suggest under restlessness. Is what is the remedy? Aconite. This is for, excuse me. Aconite is, was the first remedy I was talking about. Excuse me. <laughs> I think I'm a little uh, heady because I'm excited, but it's anyway, heart and head. Aconite is the fear of death. And it's uh, probably in some ways the most agitated remedy in our repertory. The next remedy I'm going to talk about is our sorry, Excuse me, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, but I just I, got a message. Can you spell some of these remedies? That's what I was, yeah, sure, I'd be glad to. That's what I said at the beginning. Aconite, the spelling is A-C-O-N-I-T-E. Aconite. The next remedy is arsenicum. It is A-R-S-E-N-I-C-U-M. This also, arsenicum, has the aspect, it has a dual uh, use at this time. It has anxiety, which is much worse at night, but it also has digestive symptoms, which can be stomach ache, diarrhea, not being able to digest food. So it's a remedy I would highly, you know, these are the remedies I would be able to, would have on hand for use with your animals. The next remedy I'm going to talk about is phosphorus. It's P-H-O-S-P-H-O-R-U-S. -S. Phosphorus, the keynotes for this remedy are very excitable, uh, much more excitable than usual. Uh, they really startle if there's any kind of noise around here in where I live in Fairfax every night at eight o'clock. It's kind of a wonderful thing for humans, not so much for the dogs. People, there's a collective howl that goes out to give support to the for, uh, to the frontline medical workers. So the dogs, you hear the people howling, and then you hear <laughs> a collective howl from many, many of the dogs in the in the neighborhood. All right. So those are the three remedies I would have on hand for restlessness. The next uh, ask area I want to go into is grief, and and. Uh, I think with grief, you can see that there's a distancing as uh, uh, someone was saying, her animals are coming to her to teach her, but someone that needs uh, Ignatia, and I'll spell it I-G-N-A-T-I-A. -A. They sort of get much more distant and remote and seem to need to be alone. And yet they're, they're agitated and they're sad. The next, Remedy for for grief that feels I'll spell it first and then I'll tell you is naturum muriaticum. The first word is N A T R U M. Second is M U R A T I C U M. And this is a again where the it's it's a, it's a deep sadness. It's like a in in humans when you use the, the remedy, it's been a person's been sad. It's like a, kind of a, a it's actually a very depressed but I think depression has so many meanings but the animal is, is, is not themselves their their usual personality is is very changed when when they need this remedy and the last remedy is the remedy sepia that I described at the beginning it's s-e-p-i-a and that's where for humans everything is kind of flat lack of color don't want to go out don't want to be around people distant also. Then I'm going to go, the next uh, pathology that I'm going to talk about is worry. And certainly we can see that much more in humans, but also with our animals. And when they're worried about us, they tend to get really close to us and they want to help us. You know, whatever it is, they're going to try and make it better. Excuse but, me, Sally, I just got another question. Yes. What, what potency of the remedy are you I, I was going to do that at the end, but I'd be glad to do it right no, now. No, do it at the end then. Thank okay. you. I want to do what, what, what potency is for animals and what potency is for humans. Right. Thank you. I love the questions and, and feel free to ask any questions. Um, is, okay, so as I said, the next aspect is worry. And, and with, with, as you know, with humans, you can always tell when, when uh, people are worried. It's a little little less easy, I think, to tell when your animals are worried, but you you can sense it. 
and the, what I said is they come really close to you. They want to, they know you're upset. They want to make it better. So the first remedy I am going to talk about is calcarea. Whoops. I'm going to, I may have to move. I just got a low battery signal on my thing. I'm going to move. So I'll take this. I'll take my notes so I can continue. I, excuse me. I guess this is my technical deficiency day but here we go all right I'm back the next remedy I want to talk about is calcarea which is a very uh, used very often the Cheryl can talk about it. it's one of the most have I would say the one that we call the remedies polycrest many uses and and use them throughout your practice calcarea is spelled C A L C A R E A and it's a keynote keynote for the for that remedy when when it's a human is a complete fear of disaster they just sense that something bad is going to happen and i think you can see that kind of behavior in an animal that give definitely they they're, they're fearful they don't know what it is but they're, they're they're fearful and you can sense that the next remedy is ignatia again because it has besides having just great agitation it has worry it's something again that there's going to be a disaster that something bad is happening or that something bad will happen that would be a, that's something you, you can different differentiate i think between calcarea and ignatia with calcarea it's a sense of coming doom with ignatia it's a sense of we are in doom so that would if that helps i hope it does and the last of the worry remedies that i'm going to give you today is kali foss spelled k-a-l-i-p-h-i-s and it, the keynotes for this remedy is uh, are very irritable and unable to cope they just can't cope with the situation that's overwhelming to them and i think you're going to see that uh, we are seeing that a lot in humans and then cheryl told me that you know she, what, what she was hearing and she said at the beginning was that there were strange behaviors with, with a lot of animals and one of them was loss of appetite and arsenicum is a good remedy for loss of appetite uh, because it has digestive when it gets worried digestive symptoms loss of appetite but some of the other remedies are pulsatilla and which is spelled p-u-s-a-t-i-l-l-a -L -L -A. another remedy is bryonia which is spelled B-R-Y-O-N-I-A. And the third remedy with loss of appetite is lycopodium, which is spelled L-Y-C-O-P-O-D-I-U-M, lycopodium. Lastly, I want to talk about the strange be some of the strange behaviors. And I found this remedy, which actually I've never used before, but I think it's a fascinating remedy. It's made from latex. And the keynote for this remedy is the human or the animal feels trapped, craves liberty, almost, you know, feels claustrophobic and wants to break free and to be free. And lastly, the remedy is stramonium, which is spelled S-T-R-A-M-O-N-I-U-M. -M. And with this remedy, the behavior becomes almost manic very angry and but with loquaciousness so with an animal it would be making a lot more sounds okay you, do you have any questions before i move on to potencies so anybody who has questions unmute yourself and please ask please okay no questions the potency or, or are there you have to unmute yourself Try it. There we go. Um, okay. On the Kelly Foss, was it phosphoricum? P H O S? Yes. Okay. Oh, I There's not an I. I, I abbreviated it for time. Yeah. For Kelly Foss. P H O S. O S. O S. O -S. Got it. Thank H you. Mary. Uh huh. Keynotes. If you, when you order remedy, and I would order the remedies in, if you're ordering from Hahnemann, they still use drams. So I would order all the remedies in two dram. So you have plenty. I would order remedies in 6C, 12C, and 30C for the animals. For humans, again, two drams, so you can share. 
you know, with friends, family, uh, I would order 30C and 200C. And I really, really like that you get a remedy in, within two days with, with uh, Hahnemann. So, all right. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. And I just want to say in my life, my animals bring in so much joy. I, I uh, rescued a little uh, half chihuahua. Uh, uh, let's see, she's chihuahua and terrier. And she's just like a little heart covered with fur, as most of our animals are. And, and when she sees me, when I come in the gate, because I have to go down steps, this dog comes flying and she has big ears. They're tucked back next to her head and it just makes me smile and laugh every time I see that. So anyway, thank you for everything. I, I truly believe there's gonna be a paradigm shift through this and we're, we're gonna be in a much, much better place. And thank you, Mary, to your animal that said we're all gonna be all right because I believe we are. I think we're gonna be better. Blessings. Thank you, Sally. That was wonderful, wonderful. Oh, good. And so much information, I had to write down different things. That's good. <laughs> the next up is Linda. Linda, are you with us? Because I never saw you get on the call. Oh, I'm at, yeah, I'm at the end somewhere. Oh, great. Okay, so I'm muting myself. You're up. Okay. Hi. Um... I'm also a holistic veterinarian and, um, and thought that I would start with a poem by Wendell Berry. In the dark of the moon, in flying snow, in the dead of winter, war spreading, families dying, the world in danger, I walk the rocky hillside sowing clover. So I just thought a little bit about what the animals have showed me in the last week and a half. Um, my dog has wanted to be very close and touching me um, a lot more than usual. And um, one response to that is to just melt into that connection um, that it's just so nice to have in this time of distancing and that he's just a, you know, great that way. Um, and then the other thing is to wonder about my emotional state in that moment. Was I stressed about something? Did some thought come through that maybe I um, need to attend to and that he's trying to point out to me? Um, and um, one thing that, that the animals really like is for us to be um, congruent and to be in alignment with what we're feeling. Um, and so I thought I'd talk uh, a little bit about ways that we can do that. There's a lot of different ways. Um, one of which that I think that you can do with your animals are things like uh, meditations. And there's a meditations, um, one, you know, there's many out there, but one that I recently found where um, on Facebook by Tenzin Wangyal Rinpoche. And he has about five different ones on fear. Uh, facing fear and finding peace. Um, dancing with your fear. Um, and those ones I think that you can probably do with your animal present. It, it varies by how sensitive animals are. Um, they have been telling me that if something is involving more emoting as we're discovering, you know, what we're feeling or, you know, trying to uh, face the, those feelings, um, they're not always comfortable with us exploring that in their presence. And so um, uh, one of the tools um, that I have for sort of shifting our energy or, uh, or my energy and exploring the emotions that are um, present is called the shift deck. It's like one early card, there's a whole bunch of cards called the shift deck and it has lots of wonderful 
things to do for 15 seconds to a couple of minutes that help you explore um, what's happening for you. Um, here's one that says, make a sound that fully expresses how you're feeling right now with no words, 15 seconds, you know. And so going through this deck over and over again, however long it takes until you start to feel a shift in, in um, how you're relating uh, and becoming aligned, but also allowing emotions to move through instead of staying sort of stuck in there. Um, but my dog does not want me to do this if he is around. <laughs> and so getting creative with how to do that where it's not impacting him negatively. Um, so one thing is putting them in the car. If your dog likes to be in the car, giving them a special chew treat and letting him hang out in the car while you're you know somewhere else working on things um one of us being in the house and the one, other one outside um uh maybe putting your animal in another room of the house uh with some radio or something make sure that that if you're really uh you know getting fully emotive that it's not worrying to them um so that's one thing that my dog did point out um, this week. And let's see, I'm looking at, um, oh, and then sometimes also we tend to not be present to them uh, because we're thinking about things. I kind of call it um, sort of cogitating or chewing on a mental bone, um, something that my mind likes to do. Uh, sometimes it's helpful and oftentimes it's not especially if you're chewing on the same bone over and over again um, but sometimes we do need to think about things or at least start to explore our path through and in doing so we're not always present uh, you know sometimes I'm out for a walk with my dog when when I kind of want to think about things a little bit and he wants to engage with me and so sometimes I have to explain to him like okay I'm going to think about this for a little while and then I'll come back and en engage with you um, to try to get a little space to do that. Another option would be to go for a walk uh, and leave them at home if, um, if you need some space to do that. Um, and I also learned this week just to not ever do that with a horse. <laughs> they don't want you chewing on your mental bones when you're with them. Um, that may, you know, okay, at least my horse really doesn't. Some may be a little less sensitive, but um, a horse really wants you to be grounded and present to what's happening with you in that moment. It may involve emotions, but if it does, let them through, you know, acknowledge them. Don't try to hide them because, of course, you know, that's not comfortable for an animal. But um, in general, find your peace, find groundedness, be present. Uh, with your horse and um, don't use that time to think about anything outside of what you're doing uh, right there, right then. If a phone call comes, if you feel like you have to check your cell phone because you're addicted, um, let the horse graze or take a break and, um, and relax and don't, don't have it be doing anything else while you're doing that. Uh, and then, you know, come back in relationship to the horse. Uh, so those were kind of the things that, that they showed me this uh, week. Um, one of the other things that came to mind, I was thinking a little bit about um, other things to help. And the essential oil of lavender um, applied to the heart area or the chest um, of the animals uh, just can help everyone in the vicinity with feelings of anxiety. So that was, um, yeah, that was what they told me this week. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Linda. I love you so much. And just with the essential oil to, I'd like to remind you that with any animal, you can use just a couple of drops of essential oil that needs to be diluted in a carrier oil because otherwise it may be way too strong for the animal. So usually for cats and dogs, I will do like three drops of oil to 
maybe a half ounce of olive oil or sunflower oil or something that you're using. And I feel that that's safe. Horses, you can just kind of let it whiff under the nose, I find. Are you in agreement, Lynn? Yes, yes. And oftentimes with the animals, I just use it in the environment. So I use it, you know, on their bedding or, you know, where we're hanging out. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do dilute them as well. And also just exactly, just letting them sniff the oil. And if it's something that they're interested in, then that's um, likely to be beneficial. Okay, I want to make sure. Good, I'm not. And for our last contestant coming up, and certainly not least, Kathy Malkin. Kathy, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Cheryl. Anyway, I want to just introduce myself. I'm Kathy Malkin. Um, I'm just hoping people, can you hear me, everybody? Great. Um, I'm an animal communicator. I'm also an animal Reiki teacher and practitioner, and I also wear the hat of being a humane educator. And I'm so honored to be here with the rest of you. So much of what the animals have been sharing with me in the last few weeks resonates with what everybody else has been sharing. Because what I feel they're calling out for us to do is not only put the oxygen mask on ourselves, so we take good care of ourselves to take care of them and our loved ones, but they're also asking us to shift from being human doings back to being. We're so used to going and going that we've really lost our way. And I do feel that they are asking us to try to calm our minds, a lot easier said than done. We're not used to spending, as we've all said, such alone time, maybe us as, I know I do, but everybody else is used to doing. And the animals are just, be. My Siamese cat, who you can probably see in the picture behind me, he's very clear. Get rid of the calendar. You only have this present moment. So we're being called to remember who we are as spiritual beings. We've forgotten. And animals never forget who they are. They know that they're spirit first, and then they animate a physical animal body. Because we humans also forget that we are animals before we're humans. So it's about remembering who we are and taking this, what feels very uncertain times, but to really go in and work on our inner light and our inner potential. And animals give us, they're our teachers, healers, and guides. They're showing us the way. They do it every day, but we tend to be so connected to our electronics and our busy minds that we're just not seeing. And so we do need to wake up and become conscious of what's going on because they're gonna show us. Ground, I know uh, horses, when they're lying down, they're grounding. Or even trees, we can go hug trees because social distancing, or I prefer physical distance, is very unnatural to us humans. Where for animals, it's my belief that they should really guide us to what they need and want. If they want to be touched, great. If they don't, they'll sit quietly with us. But the other message that they really need us to hear as we are practicing physical distancing and self-isolation is energetically, we're never apart. We may have this illusion that, you know, Cheryl's in Alameda for me and we've got Gretchen and Whidbey Island, but the truth is we're all connected. And this time is so precious to remember that. And how the animals want us to connect is through our heart center. It's through our heart center that we, we connect to the universe. It's where the universal life intelligence, I believe, lives. And the more we can drop out of this mind where our fear and our anxiety are, are living, and we go back into our heart, we can feel our connection to everything, to the animals, our animal families, to our families that are at a distance. Because the truth is, we're not apart. 
And I only know this because for the last 25 years or so, I've been practicing distant communication. Uh, the last 15 years, distant Reiki. So I'm connect we're all connected. We just have to get past our concept of we have to physically be with another. And that's hard because we're hardwired to be with others. So what I've been doing is just calling in the animals and as many humans as I can to energetically create a beautiful circle where we're all holding hands together, united, feeling our inner light and love and radiating it outwards. I also get the sense that the animals are kind of coming out going, yes, the humans have stopped. And I hear the birds more. I see more animals out because it's safe for them, because we've slowed down and hopefully we're, we're staying grounded. Great way to ground. And grounding really just means to stay present. And if we're not present, we kind of fly away. So grounding can be as simple as growing roots out of the bottom of your feet in feeling your connection with Mother Earth. Or we can't hug each other right now, but we can certainly hug a tree. Trees love hugs. And so we have a lot of uh, teachers and guides out there. The animals, they're very good at teaching us when we're agitated. They mirror our emotions. And what they also tell me is we need to, to put it very bluntly, we need to get a grip. Yes, this is scary times. Yes, there's a lot of worry and stress, but we need to just bring it back, take a breath and, and go into our heart center. And going into our heart center is no big deal. The hard part is staying there. And how we access our heart is simply by feeling the unconditional love we have for an individual. Could be a human, could be an animal, child, doesn't matter. But just feel all the love that you have for that individual or individuals. And stay in that feeling. Because that feeling is a beautiful feeling not only for us, but it radiates outwards. That's something that we do when we practice animal Reiki. Is you go in and meditate, you connect with your inner light, and you radiate it out. That's it. You don't have to do anything more than that. The tools are all within us. And don't worry if your mind wanders. All our minds wander. I don't care if you're the most experienced meditation person. We just have to just remember to keep bringing it back and connecting through our heart center. So as I conclude, I would love to share with everybody a Tellington heart hug. Because right now, I don't know about you, but it's hard not hugging and touching. And sometimes our animals want those hugs, sometimes they don't. And as I said, they need to lead us and let us know what they need and want. But sometimes just sitting and connecting and giving yourself a heart hug is enough to bring the animals to you. And that's where they, it's, it actually, to me, is more pure because it's their choice. We're not forcing or projecting or pushing energy. We're just sitting and being. So a Tellington Tea Touch heart hug was created by Linda Tellington Jones, and I was on a call with her a few weeks ago and she did the heart hug. And I went, oh my gosh, this is so perfect for what we need to do now. So it's simple. You just imagine a clock face on your chest, the face of a clock. This is noon, and I always get my directions wrong. Noon, three o'clock, six o'clock is down below and nine o'clock is your right shoulder. Tea touches are one and one quarter turns. So take your two hands, palms down, place them in the center of your chest, and gently go around the clock, the face of the clock, from noon to three to six, back to nine and noon, and then one more quarter. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you go clockwise, counterclockwise, just go whichever way feels best. 
one and a quarter turns and feel the love and connection to yourself, to the animals, to your loved ones, and to nature because we really are always connected and it's time to remember. So I thank all of you for being here. I am honored to be on this call and thank you, Cheryl, for bringing us all together. Many blessings. How wonderful. This is totally wonderful. Before we wrap up, does anyone have something pressing they want to add before we end? I think each of us has given so much to each other and to ourselves, and I thank you all. And I'd like to leave you and the listening audience with the thought that there's stillness and movement. We need both in order to stay healthy, to stay within ourselves, and to move to wherever it is we need to move. And I'm always reminding of find a place to dance, to sing, or to laugh. So I leave you with that. And thank you so much for joining me. You're all fabulous. Thank you. We're ending recording now.